which is on fractions. This is not doing so well today. What is this? Point five. Yeah. Fractions, decimals, and order of operations. Okay, so let's talk about what we do if we wanted to write a fraction as a decimal. So to write a fraction as a decimal, before I cover that a little, let's talk about the opposite. We've already talked about the opposite. So say I wanted to convert um, 4,500 to a fraction. How would I do that? 4,500. Oh, put it over... Put it over its last place value, which is 100, right? So like that, 45, put it over 100, and then reduce if I can. Okay, if I want to convert from a fraction to a decimal instead, I'm going to, so say I have 9 over 40, and I want to convert this to a decimal, I'm going to write it in long division, 40 over 9, and then I'm going to divide. Um, so does 40 go into 9? And it does not. So what do I do if I need to divide a number that doesn't go into another number? Add, Add a decimal point in zeros, right? Yeah. Okay. So does 40 go into 90? How many times? Twice. Twice. What's my remainder? Mm -hmm. 10. And I can keep on going, right? I can bring down another 0. 40 going to 100. How many times? Twice. With a remainder of 20. Bring down another mm -hmm. zero. It's 40 going to 200. Five times with no remainder. Right? So this is how we convert a decimal or a fraction to a decimal. We're just going to take the decimal, write it in long division, and divide until we have the complete decimal. So 9 over 40 is the same thing as 0 0.225. Okay, what if I wanted to convert, um, say I wanted to convert negative 3 over 8 to a decimal. Again, okay, same thing. I'm going to write it in long division. So if I write this in long division, that's 3 divided by 8. 8 doesn't go into 3, so I need to add a decimal point to the 3 and a 0. <coughs> and then I need to ask myself, okay, now does 8 go into 30? And it does, a total of 3 times. 3 times 8 is 24, and I get a remainder of 6. <coughs> okay, I can bring down another 0. Does 8 go into 60? I get a remainder of 4. Bring down another 0. Does 8 go into 40? 5 times, right? I get a remainder of 0. So I stop there. Yeah. So this one is negative 0 0.375 because the fraction was negative. So that one's going to be negative as well. This one was positive because the fraction was positive. Sometimes it's not going to be so simple. So we've learned that um, there are fractions that never finish, or there are decimals that never finish. For example, pi is one of those decimals that never finish. Pi, pi will keep on going forever. You approximate it to be 3.14, but it actually keeps on going forever. And we learned that with circumference. So let's talk about what happens when we have a decimal that goes on forever, like 28 over 13. Most of the time, you'll be asked to round it to some place. So um, in this class, we're going to round to the nearest thousands. Yep. So we want to round 28 over 13 to the nearest thousands. And again, we're going to divide the long way. So we're going to divide 28 by 13. I'm going to ask myself, how many times is 13 going to 28? And it goes uh, twice with a remainder of 2. 
I need the decimal point right here and bring down a zero. This 13 going to 20. Once. Oops, not 20, but 13. With a remainder of 7. Bring down another zero. It's 13 going to 70. Five times. Uh, 5 times 3 is 15. Carry the 1. 5 times 1 is 5. And 1 is 6. Remainder of 5. We're almost there, so bring down another 0. This 13 going to 50. It does. How many times? 3. Times 3 is 9. 3 times 1 is 3. Yeah, 4 would put us over. So um, we get a remainder of 11. Bring down another 0. Get 110. How many times is 13 going to 110? Um, I think we can go higher than 6. 8. Yeah. 8 times 3 is 24. Carry the 2. 8 times 1 is 8, and 2 is 10. And we get a remainder of 6. At this point, I can stop. Um, what is my answer rounded to the nearest thousands? Wait, why can I stop now? Huh? Oh, never mind. I got you. Because I want to round to the thousands, right. So what is my answer, my answer rounded to the nearest thousands? Yeah, 2.154. Okay. Why couldn't I stop after the three? Why couldn't I stop here? Right. Here I'm at the thousands. I need one more number to know whether to round up or down. Good. Okay. So by the way, this is a non-ending decimal. It's going to go on forever. Um, so you need to look at the directions and say they need you to round. What's that? Okay. So let's talk about writing mixed numbers as decimals. So how else can I write mixed numbers? I can write them as a decimal. What other type of number or fraction can I write them as? Say I have a mixed number, like 3 and 5, 6. I can write that a number of ways. I can write it as a decimal. We're going to talk about how to do that in a second. How else can I write that? As an improper fraction. How do I write this as an improper fraction? Yeah, so I get 18. Okay, so I get 23 over 6, right? These two are equivalent. We just did some other ones a second ago. We also did 9 over 40, and we did... 28 over 13. When we did 9 over 40, our decimal was 0 0.225. When we did 28 <coughs> over 13, our decimal was 2.154. Um, so, notice this is a proper fraction, and the decimal value is less than 1. That is true of proper, proper fractions. We know that if we're talking about proper fractions, it's going to be less than 1, because we're talking about less than a whole. So, less. this is 9 pieces out of a 40-piece pie. So, that's less than 1 whole pie. When we're talking about improper fractions, the, it's actually going to evaluate to be more than one. So, for example, um, this is 28 pieces out of a 13-piece pie. You're going to need more than one pie to fill 28 pieces out of a 13-piece pie. So, this, you actually need 2.154 pies. So, keeping that in mind, whenever we have a, an improper fraction, you should know it's going to be a decimal more than one. Whenever we have a proper fraction, you should know it's going to be a decimal less than one. Okay, so now that we have this improper fraction or mixed number, we can work with it both ways. <coughs> We can work with it as it is, as a mixed number. So one of the things that we need to do when working as, as a mixed number is figure out, okay, um, what is the operation between 3 and 5, 6? It's a plus sign, right? So it's the same thing as 3 plus um, 5 over 6. So if I were to just convert the 5 over 6 part to decimal, 
I can forget about the 3. I can just make it 3 points, whatever the decimal part is. Right? So let's do that. So let's convert 5 6 to a decimal. Why don't you do that for me and tell me what it is? Oops. Like this. Round to the nearest thousands if you need to. It's going to go on forever, yeah. yeah. Um, if you wanted to round to the nearest thousands, it would just point eight three three, and that's it. Right. Um, so let me do it now that hopefully you guys are kind of finished. Mm -hmm. um, 6 doesn't go into 5, so I need a 0 and a decimal point. Right, but 6 does go into 50, and it goes into 50 8 times. So I get a remainder of 2. Bring down a 0, and 6 goes into 24 3 times. 3 times 6 is 18, and I get a remainder of 2 again. So I'm going to have to keep bringing down another 0. Hmm. Right? 6 goes into 20. Well, I just did that right here. 6 goes into 23 times. So I'm going to write another 3, 18, get another remainder of 2. And this is going to go on forever, right? So this is going to be 0 0.833 repeating. When we have a repeating number, we normally just write it like this with a bar on top. That bar on top just means that number is repeating. So our answer is 0 0.83333 forever. Okay, so I know what the, what the fraction part is. So my number when I convert it to uh, decimal is going to be 3 plus 0 0.833 repeating. And 3 plus any decimal is just going to be 3 dot and whatever the decimal is. So this is my final answer right here. Yeah. Um, it doesn't matter, but this is the proper way to say it with, with only one three. Because you write the bar over the first digit that repeats. So, um, But either way, I mean the same thing. In this one, I mean three, and then more threes repeating. In this one, I just mean that three repeating. But this is the correct way to do it right here. The bar? The computer um, estimates. The computer has a certain number of digits, and it just estimates that number of digits. Okay. Um, I shouldn't say estimates, more like rounds to that number of digits. So let's say I wanted to, so we did that with the mixed number. We did it with 3 and 5, 6. We can also work with the improper fraction because they're the same thing, right? So if I want to convert 23 over 6 to a decimal, it's going to give me the same answer, but let's do it anyway. So to convert any fraction to a decimal, I write it in long division. And then I ask myself, how many times is 6 going to 23? Yeah. And I get a remainder of 5. Okay. I need to keep going, so I need to add a decimal and 0. How many times is 6 going to 50? Yes. Lucky for us, we did this already, right? Bring down a 0. 6 goes into 23 times with a remainder of 2. And we know it's going to go on forever. So that's going to be 3.83 repeating. So when you're given a mixed number, you can work with it as a mixed number or you can convert it to improper. Either way, you get it.